Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Yvonne from Ginger Chick Rehab. I'm so glad to have you back checking out what I am up to. So in today's video, I finally got enough around from thrifting at thrift stores like Goodwill, Salvation Army, secondhand stores that I thought, oh, you know what? I'm just gonna go ahead and share it. I'm not going as often like the everyday trip because we've been doing lots of yard sales, garage sales, estate sales, moving sales, <laughs> any kind of sales. So I can't say that I've been to a lot of them, but I do have quite a bit and some of the items need to be made over. And you know, when you get too many bags laying around, you're like, okay, I need to share it. Not my usual huge haul, but that's okay. Sometimes it's nice to have a shorter video, right y'all? <laughs> yep, and here's a squirt, has to come and see what his mama's doing or he just likes to be the star of the show, one or the other, which I am completely fine with. So I'm gonna go ahead and share with you what I found at the thrift stores. this it's a plastic little looking old radio so it has an on and off button and it actually takes a nine volt battery so I'm not really sure if there's just a light I don't think it there's no I don't think it plays music or anything maybe it just lights up but I just thought what a cute decor piece it was 529 um I don't have a nine volt <laughs> the only thing that it's nine volt battery and in our house are fire detectors, <laughs> so our smoke detectors. So I'll have to um, get some of those. So we usually change those out once a year in case you want to know it's a January kind of thing, you know, making sure that your house is safe. But yeah, so I thought that was a great find. And then let's see, and then I ran across, I guess he's a chalkboard that, so this was $7.29, but there's nothing I have to do to him. He is super cute, he's black, he's shiny. He comes with little chalk. It looks like nobody ever used him. He was a Hobby Lobby $24.99, which we all know half price, 40% off. Um, yeah, so I just thought he was, I thought he was too cute. Just a nice, simple black chicken to stand in somebody's kitchen decor. Now, isn't it funny when you pick something up, you're like, I like it, do I like it? Well, I didn't put it back on the shelf. So for $4.29, I picked up this little shelf sitter. I just like the two-tone of it, so I wouldn't change it at all. Um, kind of has that burning, there's a some Japanese word, isn't there, that you burn technique of wood. So I, I thought, you know what, it's it, um, Jennifer Fairway, just, I don't know, Midwestern. So I don't know if that's a, it doesn't say Hobby Lobby right off the bat, but originally it was $40. So I, yep, I don't know anything about it, but I just, I like wood. I think wood is a great accent when you have a light, a light white gray house or any, actually any color wood will go with. So now going on to color, um, I think this one lost its tag, but I think it was three twenty nine. It's just a wire basket that somebody spray painted blue. And yeah, I'll probably, I uh, know, I'll paint it. Um, if it was red, I might keep it. But yeah, so I can tell that it's older just the way that these are, I, I believe. Unless it's, oh, here's the tag. Oh, 329, I was right. It's hard to see on there, blue on blue. So yeah, I don't know what somebody used it for. Um, oh, no, nope, it's got a tag on it. So it's a new purchase good. But they did spray paint it because <laughs> that has spray paint on it. So yeah, so I will probably paint this up black. Um, yeah, I know some people like color, but I don't know. It, color doesn't really sell too well for me when I try it. Red, I can venture to red and I'm, I'm good. So then for another, for $2.29, I've actually picked up these little crockery bowls before. They're new. Um, the wooden handle, I really don't even do anything to them. I usually, if I can get them cheap enough, eight to 10 bucks. You know, it all depends on what you paid for the item. So yeah, I just resell these as is. So I, if they're under the five buck range, I will go ahead and pick them up. So I have another piece that needs a little work, but for $2.29, it's a metal galvanized tray. You can tell that they had plants in it, but I think I can clean that up and make it look, we like the rusty crusty. 
um, maybe maybe age on the little the handles a little bit. So we will see what we can do with this piece. So then I did get a bag of goodies for four twenty nine. Now I try not to do too much um, vintage utensils. They don't seem to sell terribly well when I put them in my booth, probably because a lot of people have them in the antique mall. But I really love the mustard color, that primitive. So these are nice shelf sitters. So you got a masher. Now I've sold these on eBay um, before. So it's the masher and another little masher type. And then there was a um, red handle vintage bottle opener. I'm glad I don't have to use that type of can opener anymore. That looks kind of deadly, doesn't it? Hmm, yeah, so yeah, still pretty sharp. Here were those. I got a set of three candlesticks for $3.29. So they're just probably Hobby Lobby. They are kind of a resin. Um, well, kind of. They are, they are a resin. So yeah, I will paint these up. I love set a little three that can, they don't tear though. They, this set is matching and then this one's a little bit shorter. Then another pair of candlesticks I got. They were these metal ones and I actually love the fern on it and I like the writing on it. I think they look a little cheap, but if I put a piece of wood on the top of those, one of those coasters from Hobby Lobby, that will just elevate it. Um, who does it? Made in the Philippines, Van News, California. I don't know what that, I don't know. Anyway, I thought that was super cute because we kind of do some IOD stamping like this, you know, or the transfers. And I just thought a piece of wood, perfect, easy makeover. So then for $2.29, I don't know, it was chicken, <laughs> it was chicken wire. I'll, I'll figure something to do up with it, whether it's in this makeover or just, it's just a, it's a, to me, it's like an empty um, wreath form. So we'll see what I create with this, but I thought two twenty nine dollars was good. Somebody's probably going to tell me that it was $1.29 or $1.25 at the Dollar Tree store. <laughs> I don't, I don't really visit ours very much. Ours just doesn't have, unless I go out of town, it doesn't have a ton so for $3.29, I picked up this. There's nothing I have to do to this piece. I love that it's carved and engraved out. Um, 10,000 Villages is what it is. It has a $49 price tag on it, but it was just absolutely gorgeous. So like I said, I wouldn't do anything to this. Leave this one as is, that nice wood accent. And then I got another tray that I don't have to do anything for $3.29. It's just a wooden little bowl. I, I always take my tags off. I don't ever leave them. Even those other price tags on, I won't leave those on. I will use a, my blow dryer, remove it, any goo gone for anything that residue that's left behind or a little essential oil. I don't, I just don't leave the tags on. And then I did run across this cloche at the Salvation Army. I think this was $2.29. It looks like it's got a Christmas theme going on. Um, but yeah, cloche with a base, yes. So I'll probably take the, I guess not Christmas, it's more of a lighthouse, but it's all glistening. So I'll clean it up. I'd like to distress this piece even more. Um, this was a two piece. Sometimes you can't tell, I don't know. It was a $29.99 price, so. Maybe Hobby Lobby, but cloches are nice. I don't have any on hand right now. And I did pick up, I haven't picked up pottery in a while. So for $5.29, I picked up, oh, upside down. I was really trying hard not to. It's a fish plate, just a beautiful decor piece. You could set it up, you can lay it down. It has the, um, the stamp, whoever made it. Just a nice, beautiful piece of pottery. So we are, in my area, we are surrounded by lakes. We have lots of lake people. So this was, this is perfect, perfect. So picked up that. Now I have another long candle thingy, candle thingy. <laughs> so for $6.29, I said I had another long candle thingy. So yes, um, I prefer it without the votives in it. I think it's just a nice decor piece without those. And I can see some chippy paint. Um, I'm torn between leaving the legs on, taking the legs off. I 
I don't know. So we'll see how it goes if I put the legs back on after I make it chippy. And yeah, I, I really, I think it would sell better chippy or trying to strip, because it's wood, or trying to strip it down to natural also. So we'll see, we'll see what I achieve. And then I just have a couple more pieces um, for $2.29. I love the color of this grapevine wreath. And then it has black stars on it. But now it's a little bit on the wonky side. I'd like to tighten it, make it more oval because it is, it's got, you know, um, it's going oval instead of round. So I'm going to try to re-wet it and then tie it off and see if I can get it to reform a little bit. I don't know if it'll work. Stay tuned to see if it does or not. But I love to have wreaths on hand that are already complete. So if I have a frame, a pallet frame, a window, anything like that, that I need to put something on, it's nice not to have to create something. So then my last piece um, for $5.29 is this. It is a bread box. So I haven't done any bread boxes in a while. Um, this style sells really well. I probably should get some done. So I thought, you know what, I'll show this in the haul because I just picked it up. I don't really personally care for this handle. So it is screwed in so I can take that off. And I have, I have a new idea for it. it was a transfer. So we will see, I have a little barn transfer that I'd like to put on here. So we'll see if I can get it painted up. And yes, stay tuned for that. So that's why I thought, you know what? I think I have plenty in my in this little haul of Goodwill to share with you because I have a few that need to be made over. So if you are just here for the haul, thank you for watching. But if you'd like to stay for the makeovers, they're up next. I'm going to share my last find with you of the day. And it was this little, I think it's a vintage toy. It's a little wind up, little pig. He's got a little four-leaf clover in his mouth. <laughs> it was 79 cents at the Salvation Army. So you spin him and then his little tail, oh my gosh. So when my kids were little, I used to have a little, if we ate out in restaurant kind of things to entertain them. And one of the things I had were little wind-up toys that would just entertain all of us at the table while we were waiting. So let me know if you took your kids out to restaurants, how did you keep them entertained? <laughs> <laughs> you know, child's attention span, you know, waiting for food. So anyway, I just had to share. I just couldn't pass him up. I, I, I might keep him around because I think he's just too sweet. <laughs> so anyway, let's get on with those makeovers. Yep, I'm going to be taking this blue, even though some people like blue. It seems like when I put color in my booth, I guess it just gets overlooked. So, yep, I'm just going to get this cleaned up, get those pieces of plastic out, can't find that tag again. <laughs> and then I remembered where the tag was, and then actually as I'm scraping the tags, um, I'm scraping the paint that had drips underneath this handle flat also. And a little bit of glue, goo gone to get the rest of that sticky off before wiping it down with some Dawn dish soap. So I like Rusty Krusty and if it wasn't for those three areas that you could see where pots had been sitting, I would have just probably kept it. But since I'm a reseller and I flip items, I'm going to go ahead and paint the inside of this. But I really like the rustiness that's on the bottom of this galvanized, so I'm going to go ahead and take that area off and leave that as is. I want the top portion of this to look like enamelware, but with that rust and seepage coming through, I want to make sure that I seal it in. So I'm just using the Rust-Oleum 
Rust Red Primer. And then after that is dry, about an hour or so, I'm going to go back in with the Farm Implements White Gloss Spray Paint. Now the Farm Implements Spray Paint is not a quick dry spray paint by any means, so I usually let that. One coat is plenty, especially since I primed it underneath, but it needs to be completely dry. So now I'm going back in with my ready to use Black Onyx Paint, a sponge, makeup sponge from the Dollar Tree store and yep, I'm just gonna make it look like the black enamel wear. So the first coat doesn't really stick right off bat. So it usually takes about three coats of the black just because of the smoothness of the farm implements paint. Now up next is the cloche and I was actually surprised. I'm like, oh, it was glued in. So it must have been purchased that way or the person did that themselves. So now I'm just using the heat gun, trying to get the tag off the bottom. And then of course there's glitter. Oh my gosh, glitter. Oh, <laughs> it just reminds you that you had glitter around. Between the removing of the tags and the hot glue and the glitter, I need to give this a good sanding. They must have used spray adhesive to uh, attach, you know, to keep the glitter on there. So it's still got a lot of texture going on. So I'm going to go ahead and get it sanded smooth. So if you're new to this technique, yep, I do have a Dollar Tree glue in my hand, kind of just like Elmer's glue, and I'm using the glue to make a crackle effect. So I'm putting a generous amount on, I'm going to take a paintbrush and brush it all around, and then I'm going to take it to my spray gun and spray my Kills paint and primer on the top of it, and then let it dry. And then this is what it looks like after it dries. It just gives it that nice, beautiful aged crackle effect. And I always like to take it one step further and distress the edges going back down to that black. So now let's see if I can wet this down enough to reshape it. And it's summertime here in Michigan, so I'm just going to go ahead and really saturate it with the hose. And then I just took some twine and then just put it in two different directions trying to make it a circle again. And then I let it completely dry. But I really, the thing that attracted me to this was those black stars. I love that. But after wetting it down and getting all the dust off of it, I'm like, oh, I can't really see the black stars. But never fail, I am always cutting rusty, crusty stars off of items. So I do have a stash that I'm going to add on to this wreath along with the black ones to make it pop just a little bit more. And then as I'm applying those stars, I notice that I'm like, you know, I think I could just tighten up this grapevine wreath just a little bit more. So I got some black wire out and all I'm going to do is just wrap it around the whole grapevine wreath, just intermixing it around the stars, which the black one is wired to. So this should just tighten it up a little bit more. So you have to be enjoying these easy makeovers. So far, everything's been pretty easy along with these candlesticks, but even though I'm gonna be covering them up, I'm gonna go ahead and take the tags off the bottom. Mm -hmm. 
So metal, ferns, and that beautiful writing that I can't read at all, but that's not the point. So yes, I have these wood rounds from Hobby Lobby. You can buy them just like a bag like this. And so there's a few, couple different sizes. And I was just going to put one on the top at first that has where you could put the candle in there. I'll be able to hammer that down. But it just kind of looked unfinished that way. So I, I found that I had enough that I could put them on the bottoms also. Even though on the bottom of the rounds I don't have that nail to be able to hammer it through, I'm still going to go ahead and just glue it down using the tight bond glue. It's a multi purpose so it should work out just fine. The one thing about these rounds is they are raw. They are not smooth at by any means. So after the glue had dried, I went in with some 220 sandpaper, smoothed that out, and then I want to be able to seal it with some a couple coats of polycrylic because they're really dry and the polycrylic is just going to absorb in that way they're usable if you don't seal them in and you want to put a candle or something on there or they get wet it will soak right into that raw wood so i would suggest if you use these to seal them in with some some type of a top coat even a natural wax would work <music> change up the difficulty level just a little bit on this next piece so as you saw it was missing two of the votives anyway and I really I personally I don't I I don't want the votives in there I just want to make it this pretty piece of wood so I'm gonna go ahead and remove those feet on the bottom Well, the one thing I was not expecting, I was expecting just to remove the feet and then I just have a flat surface, but uh oh, <laughs> they were inlaid. So now I need to rethink of what I want to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and mix up Durham Water Putty, Waverly Ink Chalk Paint, and then add a little bit of water as necessary to fill in those. So I'm gonna give it as an added feature by using the paint in with it. Even though it was nothing I expected, I think this will be a nice added feature. So now that it is dry, I'm going to go ahead with some 80 grit sandpaper on my orbital sander and take it all the way down to that raw wood and see what we have underneath. And then after I get it all sanded with the 80 grit, I'm going to smooth that out with some 220. The 80 grit is going to remove product, but it's going to leave it raw and really rough to the touch. And the 220 is going to smooth it all the way down. But isn't that wood underneath just beautiful? That's why I said I didn't know by the time I sanded it if it would be ugly and I need to paint it or if it would be beautiful like it is. And since I have that black feature on the bottom now, I'm going to go ahead and the inside where they hollowed these out, are it's really raw. So I'm going to go in with some black onyx ready to use paint. And yep, I'm going to make the inside of these black to match that feature on the bottom that was unexpected. Now my last step to finishing this up is I'm going to take some Verithane Natural Wax and I'm going to seal this all in. This is going to be a protective top coat. So the first coat is going to just soak right in and then I'll go back with a second coat 
to just like you do top coat layers I find if I do a couple layers on this raw wood it really seals in protect a lot of times when I do a spray on raw wood I find that even with the polycrylic being clear I find that it kind of changes the color a little bit but the clear wax on raw wood like this will just seal it in nicely leave it nice and soft but after it dries it takes it back right down to that color So my last project of this flip are going to be these three candlesticks. If you wanted to see the bread box, I'm going to go ahead and do that separately because I ended up having to take the whole bread box apart, which would have made a long video. So stay tuned for that makeover. But my next and final makeover are going to be these three candlesticks. So I'm getting them nice and clean before getting them sprayed up and sealed. three small candlesticks have such amazing detail on them that I really want to make it pop so but painting them black sealing them in with polycrylic and then now I'm using the rust-oleum white chalk paint which is white linen and chiffon mixed I have a can that I keep on hand kind of tones down that really white of the linen and the really cream of the chiffon so now I'm just going to go ahead and paint it on and the reason I want to use chalk paint is because this easily waters distresses so when I go to pop those details I'll be able just to take a wet wipe and hit those areas that I want to show off. Now since I use chalk paint, I need to seal them in, so using some polycrylic to finish them off. So thank you so much for watching today's video and as always let me know which one of the items I found was your favorite and then what item I made over was your favorite. Again thank you so much for watching today's video and if you're part of our YouTube family thank you so much and if you're new and you're checking out this channel for the first time and you liked what you saw please hit that subscription button along with the notification bell so you know we've uploaded a new video and we will see you next time guys and you can see what we're up to.